I'm a designer. I always, always love making and fixing things. No wonder I'm the one doing the DIY at home. My grandfather was a carpenter. He was a brilliant craftsman. And I used to spend hours observing him and helping him in his craft. So I think that's why I became a designer. That's one of the main reasons. And after I graduated, 20 years ago, I went to work for glass and ceramic industries and designing furniture. And it was all very exciting until one day I asked myself, does the world need another vase, another share? How can I use my design skills in a more meaningful way? So I shifted the focus of design from making finite goods that would end up in landfill to combine design and scientific research to ask questions, to engage the public in challenging topics, to frame alternative realities and futures that could help to mitigate the current environmental crisis. Now, if you want to make a stamp on sustainability, you need to look into food production and consumption systems. And why? Because they account for one quarter of all greenhouse gases emissions. That is significant. So I'm going to take you on a journey, on a journey about reimagining future food systems through design and science. One that talks about alternative protein and designing crops for extreme weather conditions. So the picture you see on the screen is mealworms and crickets. And my question for you is, would you eat insects? So hands up for yes. OK, thank you. So second question, and now you're asking where I'm going to go with this. So who's a coffee lover? Who's a frequent coffee drinker? OK, so that's significantly more. So what if I told you that with your morning coffee, you can have up to 300 fragments of insects in it? That's right, you already eat insects. So I'm sorry to spoil it for you. The same goes for chocolate and cereals. Insects are a byproduct of, that, of the production of those food items. So why eating insects? Insects are rich in proteins, minerals, vit vitamins, fats, that are crucial to our diets. But more importantly, they have a lower ecological footprint. So they use less water and less land than traditional proteins. Now, if you look into feed conversion, which is the numbers you have on screen, for one kilo of beef, to produce one kilo of beef, you have to have 10 kilos of feed. How wasteful is that? Does that make sense? But to produce one kilo of crickets, you only need 1.7 kilos of feed. Moreover, 80% of the insect is edible and digestible. And you might disagree with me on this one compared to 40% for cattle. So despite the evidence, why are we not adding insects to our diets? In fact, eating insects is not new. 
It's part of some cultures' diets for centuries. But in Western societies, we are still repulsed by the idea of eating insects. Why? So one of the aspects that deter us from eating insects is the sensory one, is the way they look. But they might be also the lack of information about their environmental benefit. It might be our cultural background. So that's where insect Hokatan started. The question was, how can I use my skills to raise the awareness to the nutritional and environmental benefits of adding insects to our diets? So I started to collaborate with food technologists and other designers. And we started by roasting and grinding insects into a flour. And then we mix that flour with other food products, such as cream cheese and icing butter and chocolate. And then we created a paste that can be extruded by a 3D printer and create all sorts of different shapes, food shapes. So why 3D printing? Well, because with a simple and very common design software, I could create various shapes that had insects. I could change insects' initial appearance. I could render them invisible. Also, 3D printing technologies outperform traditional manufacturing processes in their ecological footprint. So it uses less energy. It wastes less food, up to 40 to 60%. So I'm combining a potential sustainable protein with a potential sustainable food production system. Now, the aesthetic of these insect cookies, per se, came from the insect's very own textures and movements, just to catch people's attention to the project. And with insect Sokhata, we successfully combine 3D food printing technologies to raise awareness for the nutritional and environmental benefits of adding insects to, the, to our diets. We also increase the likelihood of people eating insects by 30% compared to other studies. And the participants in the project said that we made insects become more palatable. And they also understood the environmental value of them. And one of the aspects that was crucial for us, for me, for the team, was the engagement with other audiences and asking, what do you think? Is it tasty? What do you change here? And although I recognize that insects are not the silver bullet, they do not solve by themselves the problem, they provide a great opportunity for us to rethink about our food choices. And sustainability and resilience, it's what we make, it's what we want our food systems to be. So those are the words, sustainability and resilience, that take me to the next project. Extreme weather conditions are becoming more frequent and more severe. Take, for example, the heat wave in Canada, the floods in Germany this summer, 
they will be the new normal due to climate change, and they're not going to go away anytime soon. So how do you think those extreme weather events affect food security? Well, they decrease crop production, they increase food prices, and they increase the social and economic stability. So what, can, what possibilities can we provide? Can we redesign crops to become more resilient to these conditions? So I became interested in the research done by the appliance science team at the University of, she of Sheffield in UK. So these scientists were looking at plant's genetic blueprint, at their composition and structure. And they found out that by making small tweaks, they could make the plants and the crops more efficient under certain conditions and more resilient. So by that collaboration, I developed the project Upfalance. It comprises of four plant archetype illustrations that have specific features that make them more resilient to certain conditions. So the first one, the one that looks like a cactus, has unique sponge features that absorb water. The white flower reflects sunlight, regulating warmer temperatures around it. The leaf lace, it's inspired by duckweed, which thrives on water. And the last one, it's a crop that was designed and modified to be more resilient in higher CO2 levels. So eventually we also did and generated a digital tool in which people could learn more about the science and the project in detail. And this takes me to my very first question. How can I use my design skills to mitigate the environmental crisis? What, what if I provide a new eating experience about eating insects? What if I redesign crops that are more resilient to extreme weather conditions, balancing out social and economic stability. I'm going to finalize my talk with a quote that talks about my and other designers' approach to design, which is called speculative design. So this approach to design has the opportunity to imagine and explore possibilities that contribute to the scientific knowledge, that raise awareness for challenging topics, and that ultimately motivate people into action. So I would like to go back to my first picture. So after this talk, after learning about the potential environmental benefits, would you consider adding insects to your diets? Hands up for yes. Thank you, that's the spirit. So to you, a question to you. How can you use your skills to make an impact, a positive impact in the world? Over to you. Thank you, and thank you very much to everyone that contributed to my project.